So now I'm going to read you from the book of now. This is a much shorter passage, and this takes place in modern day neighborhood Cush in Edmonton. Two friends, one is named Raphael Garin, goes by the nickname of Rap, South Sudanese boy. And his friend, Somali kid, kind of crazy name, JC, his name is Jamal, he calls himself JC, and all kinds of other crazy names, Jackie Chan is what it's short for. <laughs> and uh, they weren't barely friends, they just met at school, and then one night, Rap accepted a ride from JC, who was driving with somebody else, and it turned out it was a joyriding car, and they got themselves into some more trouble by going to a store. You know, most of you would know that right now, the neighborhood of Cush in Edmonton, the Somali community is unfortunately suffering a lot. This, uh, violence and young men are very lost. And so, this is partly based on some true events, and these two young men, they end up at a store, some bad fellows show up, and there's a massacre store owner, some staff members, it's very late at night, are killed. Now, the man who's setting up a store next door, he's working there at midnight, setting up a store, he hears problems next door, he investigates, but of course, he's not just any man. He's a man who just happens to be a master of the deadly arts. <laughs> <laughs> so, he rescues these two boys by turning these attackers into crackers. Snap, snap. And the two young men, instead of being grateful and staying to thank him when they hear sirens, they run because they were just in a stolen car and they're terrified and this is awful, they almost died. And so when the police arrive and this, this man, uh, Yemen Hotebani, walks out, the police see him and they figure he must be responsible for this carnage in the store and they beat the shit out of him and taser him. So, uh, Raphael and his friend JC, you know, they meet at school, this is days later, they're both traumatized, they feel very guilty about abandoning this man to a beating, and they decide, okay, look, we've got to go to the, we've got to go to his store, and we've got to apologize. So that's where we'll, that's where we'll pick up. <clears throat> An hour's bus ride later, and the sun's still hot and high in the June sky, and the boys were back in Cush, walking along 111th Avenue over to 96th Street, passing pawn shops, Burger Baron, Norwood School, the Rainbow Flag Pride Center, car wash from the Dozen Bays, a run-down body shop. From the South Bank, 111th, they saw the yellow police tape on Boutes, a the store, a ribbon wrapped around the worst birthday present the community had gotten in years. And dodging cabs and buses, they landed in front of the hypermarket and its opening soon sign. Well, asked JC, aren't we going in? Rap glared at him. Look, don't rush me. I just want to think about what I'm going to say first. JC pushed on the glass door, but it was locked. He knocked loud and long. Finally, the 40-something man in the goatee and the black and gold skull cap came to the door. Hello? Up close, they saw what band-aids failed to cover. Bruises, scrapes, and the gut-puckering purple-brown ghost from a fading black eye. Uh, said... Uh, we're the, we're the, the man stepped forward into the doorway, blocking it. God damn, you're those two kids! <laughs> yeah, said JC. Look, you know, our bad the other night, <laughs> for real. But, you know, man, the way you absolutely Bruce lead them boys, you want to have a grave on their asses. You, can you teach us that shit? Jamal, snapped Rap. This was not part of the plan. <laughs> and jazzing about a mass murder that almost included as if it were a movie trailer or something? Was he nuts? You got a hell of a nerve. Rap glared at his friend JC. Uh, look, 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 man. You know, I, I know we should have... Man! <laughs> I took a beating and an arrest from the cops and stayed in jail overnight because I stepped in to save your lives and you two little shits ran off and didn't say word one which could have saved me from all that and now you show up here expecting me to train you in martial arts like I owe you something and you call me man? Rap said, 
Sir, we're sorry. Uh, but honest, we were just terrified. You were terrified? How do you think I felt when the police had their guns out and were kicking the shit out of me? <laughs> Jackie Chan said, we thought we were going to die. I thought I was going to die, thanks to you. Now get the hell out of here. He shoved himself back inside, leaned on the glass door's metal frame till the hydraulic hissed shut, then he latched all three clinking latches and stormed off to the back room. Music blasted to life. Extremely loud jazz, battering cymbals and sobbing saxophones like someone using a wrench to beat a robot to death. <laughs> <laughs> Standing on the street, Jackie Chan had already given up. <sighs> Dude hates us, man. Rat felt worse than ever. The next day, during a lull in their English class's review of To Kill a Mockingbird, Rap argued in whispers to convince J.C., who had started sitting next to him, to go back to the man's store. The way Rap figured it, his anxiety had gone up 50 degrees from guilt alone. Maybe if he could apologize properly. You know, J.C., after your brilliant train us in your snake and crane style, dude, now we owe the man two apologies. And this time, would you let me do the talking? I my bad. Oh, God, said the man at 4.33 p.m. on Thursday afternoon, the day after the funeral. You two again? Look, Mr. Ani, I, I know we screwed up, and, and, and my friend here shouldn't have come here asking for any favors, but seriously, we just want to say thanks, said J.C., oblivious to Rap's immediate glare. And, um, like, we'll work here. Rap said, what? <laughs> The man, you expect me to hire you? <laughs> no, no, he means we'll, we'll volunteer, you know? JC sounded thrilled with his own improv. You can work us like slaves. <laughs> he means, you know, slaves, sneered the man. Do you even hear yourselves? <laughs> Raps said, look, we owe you our lives, Mr. Randy. At least let us try to pay you back a little. Like I'm going to let two carjackers into my business. <laughs> We ain't carjackers, we're just car thieves. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Chan, would you let me? Look, we're not car thieves, okay? He's a joy rider. His friend, the one who died, was the thief. And this idiot, look, I, I just know him from school, okay? He offered me a ride and didn't bother telling me the car was stolen. <laughs> That's true, said JC, <laughs> as if we were helping. <laughs> so you're saying, said the man, as if he were laying out the plot of a particularly bad movie, <laughs> that I should let a joy rider and a kid who climbs into cars with sketchy almost strangers inside my business, <laughs> handle my cash, learn the intimate details of how I make a living, and have access to all my equipment and merchandise. Have I ever got that right? <laughs> JC said, well, you know, why you put it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Rap said, okay, look, I, you know, I get it. The man shook his head. Stand there. He pointed at a tile on the sidewalk. No, not there, there. They moved over two steps. There! They moved back one step. He retreated into the store. Through the window, they saw him sitting at his computer, typing for a furious 60 seconds hard enough to break most keyboards. Stood up, grabbed something out of the printer, marched back to the door. Here! They each took a sheet. Rap scanned it quickly, the names of a list of books by African writers. Rap looked up at him with eyes that must have said, what? Read. All you have to do is read one of them. And you, he said, glaring at Jackie Chan, read a different one. Then teach them to each other, so between the two of you, you know two books. Do that, and then come talk to me. And if you don't, and his lower lip was a receding drawbridge, his hand forming a fist whose fingers actually crackled as they closed, don't ever come back here again, and I freaking mean it. The door jangled. As the man leaned on the door to shut it. Click. Damn, boy, we just got served. No, we just got owned. That guy for real expects us to read a book just so we have permission to say sorry. Look, JC, he saved our lives. What, are we going to just drip away? I mean, obviously, it, it matters to this guy that we do this. You can't even read one lousy book. What's it going to hurt? What are you afraid of? What are you, over and shit, analyzing me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Dr. Phil. Joy riding, how's that working for you? How much worse could one book be than almost getting killed for kicks? Man, where are we gonna get all these 10 books or whatever? That costs like 50 bucks. You don't have to get them all. 
Just one. You ever hear of a library? Library? The word blasted out of JC's mouth. Like Rap had just said, they should get advanced plastic surgery to turn themselves into fully operational transformers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the library. Man, what's the kid? What books we're reading? Got enough reading to do for school. I even do a mat to cook a mockingbird and whatever. <laughs> well, <laughs> look at this list, all right? Look at these titles. You ever have a teacher get you to read books with these kind of names? There's even a Muslim one here. JC glanced at the list and then eyed him. Well, I don't even own a library card anymore. I, I owed like $200 for some CDs my little brother destroyed. Rap tried shaking the disgust out of his head. He couldn't imagine not having an active card. The library was his best friend and his only source for DVDs, and he couldn't afford renting them at five bucks a piece. If he ran up a bill like JC's, he'd never get anything to watch. And his mother lectured him about irresponsibility and money wasting until two weeks after he died of old age. <laughs> You done making excuses? Nope. Then I'll take them out. For real? Yeah. Well, get me some on hundred pages, all right? I got things to do. No, you don't. <laughs> it's a speech, damn! And you're coming with me. Jackie Chan put his palms up, shoulders high, horrified. Man! Rap walked away. JC drooped his head and followed him like they were hooking it to the electric chair. <laughs> but that would have been too short a walk. Instead, they sold it 10 blocks south to downtown and the biggest library in the city where, without realizing it, they were about to begin their revolution. Mm -hmm. <laughs>